Hello, welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. We're glad you joined us. And our program today is gonna to focus on a rather common problem in gynecologic pathology that is a little bit sticky. Um, so uh, let's introduce it with this uh, particular case and then we'll illustrate it with an example or two. So a 65 year old woman presents with a unilateral ovarian tumor and a similar looking tumor in the endometrium. This is kind of the chicken and the egg kind of problem, which came first, uh, what's going on. Uh, so let's launch in to look and see uh, what uh, some of the challenges are in making this uh, determination. Uh, here we see uh, a tumor in the endometrium uh, it's invading into the myometrium. You see here <clears throat> into uh, areas uh, sort of in the mid portion and almost maybe down uh, deeper into the uh, myometrium. Uh, this is a uh, true invasion, not adenomyosis type involvement. Um, these may be uh, lymphatic space involvement areas here, um, uh, but uh, we don't see definite uh, uh, endothelial lining uh, of these cells. Uh, these could also be cells that have been pushed uh, into the endometrium. So we have a tumor that is invading uh, into the myometrium uh, with uh, features of a fairly low-grade tumor um, and uh, <clears throat> uh, no other specific dedifferentiated components or things of that sort. So, uh, this might suggest that uh, in a patient with an invasive tumor that the patient uh, could have metastases to uh, adnexi. Uh, once the tumor gets into the outer half uh, of the uh, myometrium, that's certainly more likely uh, and uh, accounts for an upstaging of the tumor. So let's look then at uh, the tumor in the uh, ovary. So here we have a fairly large uh, mass uh, again, we see a lot of uh, glandular formation, um, fairly uh, low grade appearing, uh, not a lot of solid growth here in these portions. We have some intervening stroma um, and uh, nicely well-defined glands. Uh, in this area, we start to see uh, a little bit more solid tumor, um, areas that begin to look a little bit higher grade um, and so that can begin to uh, uh, discount our uh, concern or our uh, supposition that uh, this is a uh, metastasis um, because it is a little bit uh, higher grade in this particular area. Uh, as we look further in this patient, um, some uh, a number of things uh, come into play. So. Uh, historically, um, there were several criteria that have been espoused by a, a large group uh, uh, fairly recently reporting uh, on this um, in terms of things that favor a sort of synchronous primary type of process. Um, if we have a unilateral ovarian mass, well, that's more likely that these are synchronous because in general, if things are going to metastasize, they may go to both uh, ovaries at the same time. Um, endometrial metastases to the ovary, possible, but less likely. Uh, and of course, similarly, an, an ovary met to the uterus is uh, much less likely with the unilateral mass, but possible. If we see a deeply invasive endometrial tumor with uh, lymphovascular invasion, well, that makes uh, synchronous primaries less likely and favors an endometrial metastasis to the ovary. Uh, if we have similar histology, uh, that uh, can go either way. Um, it uh, certainly, uh, endometrioid is a fairly frequent uh, presentation in this setting. Um, if we have serous um, carcinoma, then uh, unquestionably, uh, that is more likely to metastasize to the ovary. Uh, through the tube or vice versa. Um, 
On the other hand, if we have a background of endometriosis or some other precursor lesion, an endometrioid adenofibroma, and as you may have noticed, as I showed the ovarian tumor, there was quite a bit of fibrous stroma there uh, that looked as though it could have been an adenofibroma, uh, then that would tend to favor uh, synchronous primaries uh, because we know that there would be precursor uh, substrate in that site uh, that would be subject to the same uh, um, uh, oncogenic milieu that uh, would produce an endometrial tumor, at least in the, in the sense of uh, um, endometrioid tumors. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we can use immunohistochemistry, but most of these criteria were developed in, in advance of the uh, uh, immunohistochemistry uh, uh, literature. Um, if we see discordant uh, findings, however, using immunohistochemistry, um, these can be uh, in favor, again, of synchronous primaries indicating different lines of differentiation. Uh, on the other hand, if these are similar, well, then either a metastasis or one way or the other is, is possible. And likewise, people have attempted to use molecular testing, such as uh, MSI testing or loss of heterozygosity, X inactivation, various other mutations to evaluate uh, and uh, rule in favor of discordance or uh, um, metastases. So let's come back to our case. And uh, we had an area of uh, apparent uh, implants in a couple of areas of the pelvis. Um, and in this case, uh, we can see there is uh, some conventional endometrioid uh, carcinoma here uh, with these uh, tall glands, uh, sparse fibrovascular stroma, um, and pretty atypical cells, hemorrhagic debris, uh, nuclear pleomorphism, other hallmarks of uh, malignancy. However, um, in one area, we had a tumor that looked like this. Um, and uh, as we come into focus on this, uh, it will be evident that this is a higher grade tumor. Um, I apologize that my uh, pixelation is uh, certainly taking a long time to, uh, to load uh, the image in any, with any degree of uh, clarity here. So there we go. Uh, and we can see that this is a solid high-grade tumor with virtually no glandular differentiation. Um, in fact, uh, this area had the features of dedifferentiated carcinoma. Um, and uh, this was present both in one area on the ovary and in one of the uh, pelvic implants. So in the ovary here, we have, uh, in essence, discordant histology uh, in the sense of dedifferentiation, not present in the uh, uh, endometrial tumor, uh, and that would then argue for um, a uh, separate primary. Here's the, another section from the peritoneal implants, uh, again showing this high-grade uh, dedifferentiated tumor uh, in this patient. So uh, on that basis, we made the case for um, uh, Synchronous primaries, the ovary showing dedifferentiation, the endometrium uh, with a lower grade endometrial carcinoma, but with um, mid to, to uh, outer half uh, myometrial invasion. Of course, it's the dedifferentiation that's going to drive her treatment um, and uh, will make a difference uh, for her outcome in terms of her responsiveness to that. So um, let's take another example. Um, a similarly aged patient, um, endometrial tumor. Here you see um, this lesion, very superficial, no invasion, no pushing, no lymphatic space. Um, we can't even measure this because we don't know kind of what, uh, where the endomyometrial junction normally was. Uh, we can go to higher magnification here um, and even in some areas, we may see some residual benign glands uh, uh, at the base here, indicating that uh, this may not have even yet uh, begun to invade the myometrium. You, see, you still see a little suggestion of stroma here, uh, suggesting that this is almost uh, non-invasive uh, at this uh, point in time. 
So uh, a low stage uh, uh, endometrial tumor. Uh, then we look at the uh, ovarian tumor. Um, and here again, we see a lot of gland formation, some areas of uh, necrosis. Um, <clears throat> and uh, hemorrhage, a little bit of fibrous stroma. Um, again, endometrioid morphology with uh, tall columnar cells, branching and uh, interlacing glands, no solid differentiation, no lymphatic space invasion, uh, no other features uh, that would dissuade us. So it's a, it's a grade one uh, endometrioid uh, uh, adenocarcinoma. However, on uh, additional sectioning uh, in this lesion, there was evidence of uh, uh, endometriosis focally. Um, and so uh, uh, that feature together with the low stage endometrial tumor, um, surface confined unilateral ovarian tumor would argue in favor again of synchronous primaries. Um, so uh, what do we do with serous carcinoma? Um, these lesions can involve the endometrium and or fallopian tube and ovary. Um, in this circumstance, the depth of invasion, lymphovascular invasion are not predictive as we know that superficial tumors can spread widely. Um, the presence of a precursor lesion itself, like such as a stick or an uh, and endometrial intraepithelial carcinoma, does not guarantee that that's the primary um, because they can be colonized from ovarian sites and so forth. And we know that diffuse spread um, is much more common than synchronous tumors in this situation. Um, so in this situation, immunohistochemistry can be helpful. Uh, so for example, WT1 positivity, much more frequent in ovarian or tubal tumors as opposed to endometrial tumors. So if you have a disseminated peritoneal tumor, a little bit of EIC in the uh, endometrium, uh, but the uh, disseminated tumor is WT1 negative, uh, that could favor an endometrial origin. Likewise, HER2 overexpression uh, would also favor uh, uh, an uh, endometrial origin. The one thing that might help uh, as well is P53 if you have discordant uh, patterns or different patterns of expression, say one with um, diffuse uh, cytoplasmic uh, expression, whereas one has uh, um, you know, a truncating mutation with uh, less or, or no uh, nuclear expression and so forth. So that, that feature can be helpful. But most often in this situation, we're, struck, we're, we're stuck. We don't have these helpful features and we presume that it began um, as a uh, disseminated tumor rather than a uh, synchronous tumor. So our finest, final sign out on our particular case with the dedifferentiation. Uh, synchronous primary endometrioid carcinomas of the ovary and endometrium with dedifferentiation in the ovarian tumor uh, with spread to the peritoneum. So I hope that you found this uh, discussion of this uh, issue uh, helpful, uh, that you'll refer to uh, the chart we've provided um, and uh, perhaps uh, come back uh, uh, another time to review the slides, uh, which we will link uh, in the uh, comment section below. Uh, we really appreciate you uh, subscribing to our channel. It helps us a lot to uh, get the message out. And we always welcome your comments, either directly or in the chat box uh, below. So until next time, uh, thanks so much for joining me.